Hi, I'm Chad Gaylor with the National Dairy Council. I love to make big, bold cheese boards. They're really fun and I want to give you some tips on how to make your own ultimate cheese board. So keep three things in mind. Select something mild, select some cheeses that are a little more robust in flavor, and select some really intense flavored cheeses. Now mild cheeses, it's great to grab a Colby or a Havarti because their milky, buttery flavors are loved by both kids and adults. Now the center and heart of that plate is really going to be something more robust in flavor like cheddars, parmesans, or gouda. I don't really think your cheese board is complete until you have something intense in flavor to really excite those foodies in the crowd. So I love to go with blue cheeses, but today I've selected this cheddar blue mashup for its great look and its really intense unique flavor. Now that you've selected your cheeses, it's time to pick a board worthy of those cheese superstars. Now, you want to pick something large enough so that your cheese doesn't feel crowded and it has enough room to put all your other food pairings on there. I love the way cheese looks on natural wood or a slate board, but be creative and pick whatever you like. Start with your white and milder cheeses and move through to your more colorful and flavorful cheeses. Another good idea to keep in mind is to start with your hard cheeses and take them out of the fridge for a few minutes so that they cut, crumble, and slice a little easier. And keep your soft cheeses cold so that they don't smear when you're prepping them. Food pairings are a really important part of that ultimate cheese board, but it can be really overwhelming with so many choices. So I like to simplify that and make sure I have three elements, something sweet, something savory, and something crunchy. Now my go-to sweet is honey because it goes with both mild and flavorful cheeses. Try a dab of it on Parmesan for that really great sweet savory contrast. Bread and crackers are so versatile, they're a must and add some nuts to the plate for some crunch and because they pair wonderfully with gouda. Prosciutto is a staple, but try some delicious crispy fried bacon for something really familiar. Don't forget to bring in some fruits and other great fresh vegetables to really round out your plate. Now an unexpected crowd pleaser is dark chocolate. Try it with some Havarti for a great milky, chocolatey flavor experience. Here's a couple kitchen tricks and tools you might want to keep in mind when you're trying to make that ultimate cheese board. But first I want to tell you, don't worry, you have everything you need in your kitchen to make a great board today, like a sturdy knife and your everyday cutting board. But a few things I've picked up to make it a little bit easier are things like a perforated knife, one that has holes in it, because that reduces the surface area of the knife and allows you to slice through the cheese really cleanly and it doesn't stick to the knife. Something I really like to use for soft cheeses, especially blue, is a wire. It allows you to really cleanly go through that soft cheese. A few things you want to keep in mind when you're serving the cheese is to have a spreader for those creamy soft cheeses, a nice versatile slicing knife that can work for both soft and hard cheeses, and then also include a plane. While it might look like a spatula, it's great for taking thin slices off of hard cheeses like Parmesan. Now it's time to enjoy your ultimate cheese board. Now remember, take it out of the refrigerator about 15 minutes before you serve it 